uh, court action going on? No, ma'am. Okay. Well, sir, what I'm going to need you to do is turn around for me and put your hands behind your back, all right? Okay. Apparently, you have to in California. Yes, my Dion. We all know about Hell's Angels, right? They are notorious for their wild rides and fearless attitudes, striking fear into the hearts of those who cross their path. During one of their infamous road trips, the gang found themselves cruising down the highway. Suddenly, one of the bikers was signaled to pull over by a police officer. Feeling a surge of frustration, the biker reluctantly obeyed, pulling his bike to the side of the road. His fellow bikers followed suit, forming a line of intimidating figures along the shoulder. As the officer approached, the first biker wasted no time in declaring, I've got a gun! The tension in the air skyrocketed. Without missing a beat, the officer calmly requested to see the firearm. With a defiant expression, the biker pointed the weapon. The officer, though cautious, proceeded to examine it carefully. Meanwhile, the officer turned to another biker. He denied any possession of a weapon. Perplexed, the officer questioned why the first biker was carrying a gun. With a nonchalant shrug, the second biker casually replied, It's empty. No bullets. As the officer processed this unexpected revelation, the second biker asked, So, officer, just how fast were we going? Police replied, 73. Then the member asked, What's the speed limit? The police replied, 65. How fast are we going? 73. What's the speed limit? 65? 65? Then the cops asked them, You guys need to keep your distance. Back to the van, please. To the van. As tensions rose and the situation grew more intense, Taylor, one of the bikers, realized that two members of their group were missing. Marked, normally we'd pull over and make a couple calls and find out where the heck everybody's at and regroup everybody. I got to get gas before I fugging. Yeah, well I thought that's what we're doing. I've been on reserve for like 10 miles. But normally we'd pull over and make a couple calls and find out where the heck everybody's at and regroup everybody. <laughs> I gotta get gas before I fucking... Yeah, well, I thought that's what we're doing. I've been on reserve for like 10 miles. Deciding it was time to stop and refuel, Taylor emphasized, it was time to stop and get gas and make the call from there. Meanwhile, two members of the group were engaged in conversation with the police. The officer called out to one of them, Hey, Agram, come back here in a minute. One of the bikers cautioned, Don't mess with the bike, all right? Hey, Agram, come on back here a minute. Don't mess with the bike, all right? The officer reassured him, saying, I got no. I'm going to California since you're 6195. That's cool. Just, I just didn't want you grabbing stuff off the bike. Oh God, now I'm going to California, says you're 6195. Oh, that's cool, just, I just didn't want you grabbing stuff off the bike. In the midst of the exchange, a person with a video camera was noticed nearby. When the police called out to them, they replied, Yeah, you're going to get yourself in trouble, indicating a reluctance to get involved. Come on down here. Yeah, you. You're going to get yourself in trouble. After the tense encounter with the police, the officer informed the bikers, We're in Humboldt Justice Court jurisdiction. I'll need your signature right here by the little X. Curious about the consequences, one of the bikers couldn't help but ask, How much is that ticket? The officer responded matter-of-factly, If you just pay it by mail and don't show up, it's 150 bucks. That's the jurisdiction we're in? Let me get a signature down by little X there from you. How much is that ticket? If you just pay it by mail and don't show up, 150 bucks. Oh, whoa. The bikers exchanged surprised glances, exclaiming, Oh, whoa. With the paperwork sorted, the officer instructed, All right, here's that back. You don't have any ammo anyway, but throw it back in the holster. There you go. Just leave it in touch and we'll be on our way. With a casual, adios. Oh, whoa. All right. There's that back. You don't have any ammo anyway, but throw it back in the holster. There you go. Just leave it in touch and 
We'll be on our way. The bikers bid farewell to the officer and resumed their journey down the open road. As they rumbled along, Moody reflected, Yeah, we get pulled over a lot. You're going to ride, you're going to ride fast. That's just part of the game. We end up with tickets here and there. Yeah, we get pulled over a lot. You're going to ride, you're going to ride fast. That's just part of the game. We end up with tickets here and there. Pulling into a gas station, Tommy couldn't resist a bit of humor, teasing, How's that ticket feel? Both bikers burst into laughter. After the encounter with the police, one of the bikers pondered aloud, Where are all our friends? The other biker nodded, understanding the concern. You know what? Let me call them. I'll see where the guys are. How's that ticket feel? <laughs> Where's all our friends? You know what? Let me call while I see where the guys are. Good idea. Well, It'll only work if they stop. Dialing up Paul, the biker inquired, Where are you guys? Paul's voice crackled through the phone. We had to pull over and get some gas and I think Taylor coasted in. Where are you at? Tommy sighed. Moody got us pulled over by the cops, but we'll explain that to you when you get here. Anyway, we're at the north off-ramp to Montezuma's castle. Hey, where is it? Wait, where are you guys? We, we, we had to pull over and get some gas. Uh, I think Taylor actually coasted in. Where, where are you at right now? Moody got us pulled over by the cops, but we'll explain that to you when you get here. Paul reassured them. We're not too far away, and we'll meet you up there. Oh, well, we'll try to find a sign or whatever. Not too far away, and we'll meet you up there. Oh, uh, well, we'll try to find a sign or whatever. With plans in motion to reunite with their friends, the bikers felt a sense of relief, knowing they wouldn't be riding alone for much longer. As Paul and the rest of the gang plotted their routes, Moody and Tommy found themselves in a tense exchange. Just get out of my way, Tommy muttered, frustration evident in his tone. Moody, at the center of accusation. It wasn't my fault this morning or anything. Don't blame me. Don't be upset about the ticket, dude. I had nothing to do with it. Get out of my way. It wasn't my fault this morning or anything. With that. Don't blame me. <coughs> Don't be upset about the ticket, dude. I had nothing to do with it. Why? Tommy sighed, trying to diffuse the tension. Well, I... I'm not blaming you, but every time I'm hanging out with you, I end up getting a speeding ticket. I'm not blaming you, but every time I'm hanging out with you, I end up getting a fucking speeding ticket. As the discussion unfolded, the rest of the gang arrived, curious about the commotion. What happened to you guys? One of them inquired. Tommy chuckled, shaking his head. Tickets. He proceeded to recount the encounter with the police. No, he just wrote us tickets and let us go. And then he says, I'm carrying a gun. So the cop takes his gun pulls it out, opens it up, he says, there's no bullets in this gun. Laughter erupted among the group as they shared in the absurdity of the situation. What have you? Tickets. I thought, I thought at least he'd get arrested. No, he just wrote us tickets and let us go. And then he says, I'm carrying a gun. So the cop takes his gun, pulls it out, opens it up. He says, there's no bullets in this gun. <laughs> <laughs> With spirits lifted, they resumed their road trip, reveling in the freedom of the open road. But just as they were getting back into the groove, the wail of a siren pierced the air as another cop car approached, signaling yet another unexpected twist in their journey. Amidst the rush of the road, two members of the group found themselves embroiled in a heated exchange. I said I was flashing my lights and trying to get you to slow down for the last 10 miles, one of them insisted his frustration evident in his tone. It doesn't bother me. Nothing's worse for me. If it's worse for you, that's your problem. It doesn't bother me a bit. I don't feel bad. I said I was flashing my lights and trying to get you to slow down for the last 10 miles. It doesn't bother me. Nothing's worse for me. If it's worse for you, that's your problem. It doesn't bother me a bit. I don't feel bad. Yeah, no. You know it because you make yourself feel better by messing with others. The other retorted sharply. I'm not messing with anybody. I'm telling you. I told you to slow down. I'm telling you to slow down, the first biker said. The tension was palpable as the argument continued, each member standing their ground. Interrupting the dispute, the police officer intervened, addressing one of the bikers by name. Brian, citation for the speed. I wrote it civilly instead of criminally. The address for the court is here. You've got until the 19th of next month to take care of it. Signature right there on the X, please. For the speed, I wrote it civilly instead of criminal. The address for the court is here. You've got till the 19th of next month to take care of it. Your signature right there on the X, please. Yeah, okay. Wait, one With a resigned sigh, 
Brian accepted the citation, realizing the consequences of his actions. As he scrawled his signature on the document, Brian, feeling a mix of confusion and concern, questioned the officer. What do you think I did? Wait, just one ticket, and then that's it? A fellow member chimed in reassuringly. Yep, because he had the whole group following him. Wait, one ticket, and then that's it? Yep. They just do it for the front guy? Yep. Why? Because he had the whole group following him. Turning back to Brian, the officer disclosed the severity of the offense. How far were you going? 66 in a 45 zone. With that, Brian received his copy of the citation. As the rest of the group approached, their banter mixed with a hint of teasing. I wouldn't just handcuff him. Oh, you want to be cuffed? One joked, eliciting a chuckle from the others. Should we cuff him? Another member teased playfully. How are you going? 66 in a 45 zone. Brian, here's your copy. <laughs> I wouldn't let just handcuff him. Hey, oh, you want to be cuffed? Well, I don't can I tase him should, too? Shall we cuff oh. him? <laughs> Trying to lighten the mood, one member offered a silver lining to Brian. Look at the bright side, Brian. It's better than me. Yeah, another agreed. I was going to warn you, but I didn't want to do 100 miles an hour to come up and catch you. Bright side, Brian. It's better you than me. Yeah, that's yeah, true. You, I, can, I was going to warn you, but I didn't want to do 100 miles an hour to come up and catch you. <laughs> Concerned about their whereabouts, Brian expressed his uncertainty. Oh, no. I don't know what county we're in. Another member reassured him. It's a DPS. Oh no. I don't know what county we're in. Yeah. It's oh. a DPS, so I don't think oh, it matters. Yeah. Get transferred. Well, thanks for taking me to the team. <laughs> With that settled, they continued their journey, navigating the twists and turns of the mountain together. Mike, one of the members, couldn't help but remark, it's two tickets in one day. Dave, being the realistic, added, The wind's going to blow it out, I'd say. Brian and John were always eager to take the lead. Riding in front is easy, so they established the course for things. So it's almost as if they got the ticket and earned it. Brian and John always wanted to be up front. It's easier to ride up front. So they set the course for things. So it's kind of like they got the ticket, they earned the ticket. Undeterred by the day's events, the bikers pressed on, their destination set for Arizona Bike Week and a live concert by Bad Company. Along the way, they had the unexpected pleasure of crossing paths with actor Gary Busey, who they invited to join their ride. With guest riders Brian Bosworth and Gary Busey on board, the group's bond grew even stronger as they began their amazing voyage. But with the road stretching out before them and new adventures on the horizon, the question remained, would they all survive the journey? As the journey continued, Big Tom, one of the members, shared some wisdom with his fellow bikers. No, if you're not an automatic pilot, you ain't been riding long enough anyway. And if you're in that zone, your heart's beating like this. You're focused on the road, your right arm's turning this way, your left arm's turning this way. If you're sliding one way or the other, you dip a shoulder to keep your bike just that much from going off the side of the road or bumping into your brother. That's what makes you rock. If you're not on automatic pilot, you ain't been riding long enough anyway. And if you're in that zone, your heart's beating like this, you're focused on the road, your right arm's turning this way, your left arm's turning this way. If you're sliding one way or the other, you dip a shoulder to keep your bike just that much from going off the side of the road or bumping into your brother. That's what makes you rock. Their ride brought them to a stop at a particular location, only to be greeted once again by the flashing lights of a cop car. This time, it was a lady cop who approached them. Confusion filled the air as she questioned, Okay, what are all these cameras? One member couldn't help but remark, pretty brave female cops going over people, bikers. Okay, what are all these, what are all these cameras down here? Pretty brave female cops going over people, bikers. Another member chimed in, trying to make sense of the situation. Looks like, I don't know if we ran a red light or what, and they just pulled us over. A female biker expressed her frustration, saying, What's your problem? I don't know. I guess we turn. And then next thing I know, there's like a million copy lists, and it's the smallest town in the whole state. Looks like, uh, I don't know if we ran a red light or what, and uh, they just pulled us over and... Do you need another unit? 
What's your problem here? I don't know. I guess we turn, and then next thing I know, there's like a million copy lists in the smallest town in the whole state. In the middle of the confusion and irritation, the riders were once again confronted with unforeseen road challenges, such as navigating through tiny villages and interactions with law authorities as they pressed on to their target. Tensions rose as the conversation escalated. Get back, the police warned. They don't want us to go through there. They don't want a bunch of bikes passing through there. That's the only reason they complain, said another member, echoing the frustration. I think Gary gave her a little love, you know, and she didn't like it. And she's a mama cop with a badge and shit. So it's so stupid. Get back. This is what's wrong with her. Sir, if you please keep your hand right those people just don't want us going through there. They don't want a bunch of bikes going through this. The only reason why they're complaining. Well, yeah, that's that's the that's the first reason. We had it set up though. You know, and I think Gary gave gave her a little fucking love, you know, and she didn't like it, and she's you know mama cop with a badge and shit. So it's just so fucking stupid. I'll take charge or responsibility. Another biker added, irritation creeping into his voice. Sensing the tension, the cop said, "All of you can take a step back from me. I'd appreciate it, right?" I don't like being crowded like this. What are all these cameras doing here? Cut! Cut! Cut the bike! Uh, who can charge us? I'll take charge or responsibility. What's the matter? Keep your hands at it. Keep your hands right to see Alright? All of you can take a step back from me. I'd appreciate it, alright? I don't like being crowded like this. Right. Immediately, another biker replied, I'm sorry, you want me to stand back? Attempting to diffuse the situation with understanding and cooperation. Right, what, what is back. Going on? Now what I have is about 16 citizen complaints and I have one officer. As tensions mounted between the police and the biker gang, the officer addressed the group sternly. Now what I have is about 16 citizens complaining to one Austrian officer who has already called and said that there was some reckless driving up over Mingus Mountain. It's about 16 citizen complaints and I have one off-duty uh, officer who has already called and said that there was some reckless driving up over Mingus Mountain. Seeking clarification, one of the bikers asked, Can we ask what that was? The officer didn't hesitate to respond, listing off the infractions. Yeah, you were passing vehicles, riding more than two in a lane, passing on the left. Can we ask what that was? Yeah, you were passing, uh, passing vehicles, passing. riding more than two in a lane, no, passing on the left. Attempting to explain their actions, another biker interjected, We were tagging them all the way to the canyon, so... Sensing the tension escalating, the officer commanded, Stand back from me, please. We were tagging them all the way through the canyon, so... Stand back from me, please. Defending their innocence, a biker asserted, I'm not turning. Another biker added, I've never passed anybody. Despite the efforts to calm the situation, the officer persisted, Sir, come here. I'm not sure. I've never passed anybody. Sir, sir, fill them in. Sir, come here. Amidst the tension, one of the bikers offered a simple greeting. Hi. Suddenly, Another voice interjected with urgency, go to the knife and a gun. The conversation took an unexpected turn as Gary Busey, a member of the biker gang, stepped forward to address the police. My name's Gary Busey, he announced. The officer responded with a simple, all right. Hi. Let's go to the knife and a gun. My name's Gary Busey. All right. You want to your Gary continued, seemingly curious, and you have a picture of me? The officer remained focused on the situation at hand, instructing, You can't put your pockets where I can see them. Gary introduced his companion, This is Brian Bosworth, my friend from Oahu. The officer, maintaining professionalism, inquired, Okay, do you have some ID on you? Brian Bosworth, my friend from Oahu. Okay. Do you have some ID on you? Surprised by the request, Gary responded, What? Do you have some ID on you? No. It's in my shed casing. Do you have some ID on you? What? Do you have some ID on you? No, it's in my shed casing. One of the bikers tried to calm the situation by explaining they were filming a documentary. The officer acknowledged, but warned that complaints had been made. Names were exchanged, and the officer confirmed. Tensions rose as the bikers noticed cameras and urged caution. Frustration grew as they discussed potential complaints and expressed disbelief. Yeah. That'll get you in trouble every time, remarked one of the bikers, acknowledging the potential consequences of their situation. You know who I am? Yeah, that'll get you in trouble every time. 
Reflecting on past experiences, another biker lamented, this is the way it always is. You get a group of bikers, and then somebody doesn't like the noise, and the next thing you know, somebody's calling in to complain. This is the way it always is. You get a group of bikers, and then you know somebody doesn't like the noise, and then the next thing you know, somebody's fucking calling in to complain. Asserting their innocence, another biker stated, I don't think we were driving recklessly. No, we were actually very much under control. I don't think we were driving recklessly. No, we were actually very, very much under control. What were they saying? Curious about the accusations, one of the bikers asked, What were they saying? I mean, they got me plotting a gun and all that shit. Another biker responded, They shot you with a fucking gun on you. What were they saying? I mean, they got me plotting a gun and all that they shit. They shot you, got a fucking gun. Okay, well, you got I mean, a machete. I don't know. Gary encountered a confrontation with law enforcement, where he displayed some attitude regarding freedom. When asked about any court action, Gary denied any ongoing legal proceedings. However, the situation escalated when the officer informed him of an existing warrant, prompting the officer to request Gary to turn around and place his hands behind his back to be handcuffed. Yeah, court action going on? No, ma'am. Okay. Well, sir, what I need you to do is turn around for me and put your hands behind your back, all right? Gary complied with the officer's instructions, acknowledging the existence of a warrant. When asked for identification, Gary admitted to not having any. The sudden handcuffing of Gary left the other bikers surprised and questioning why it was happening. The bikers were in disbelief and demanded to know the charge against Gary. Yes, my no, I don't. Whoa, where the fuck are they, uh, the why, why are they handcuffing him? What, what's the charge? What's the charge? What do you do? One of them repeatedly questioned, What's the charge? What's the charge? Another biker asked, What did he do? The response came from the officer, He's got a warrant. This revelation sparked immediate reaction among the bikers. One of them exclaimed, You got a fucking warrant, Gary? Gary denied the allegation, asserting, I don't have warrants. You got a fucking warrant, Gary? I don't have warrants. The situation quickly escalated as the bikers perceived the officer's actions as harassment. One of them declared, This is harassment now. This is harassment now. Concerned for Gary's well-being, one of the bikers asked, You all right here? Gary's response was straightforward, No, I'm not. You all right here? No, I'm not. Expressing dismay at the situation, another biker questioned, Why do you guys gotta take him away? The tension escalated as another biker warned, we're gonna have warrants. We're gonna have warrants. Demanding answers, the bikers repeated, What's the charge? Why do you guys gotta take him away? Yeah, what? 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 What's the charge? The officer provided some context, stating, He works out of California, suggesting a potential reason for Gary's apprehension. The situation took a decisive turn as the officer addressed the group, stating, Yeah, we're gonna see if they're extraditable, and if they are, then he's going with us. Yeah, we're gonna see if they're extraditable, and if they are, then he's going with us. Seeking reassurance, one of the bikers asked, So everybody else is cool, officer? The officer's response was blunt and dismissive. All y'all can get out of here for all I care. Everybody else is cool, officer? All y'all can get out of here for all I care. The bikers reacted with frustration, one of them exclaiming, That's fucking bullshit. That's fucking bullshit. As the scene unfolded, the fate of Gary Busey hung in the balance. Would this be the end of the road for him? Only time would tell. Stay tuned for the next episode to find out.